Are you looking for a way to block the ads you're getting at home? Would you like to have your DNS lookup secure and use just one app to do it? Well, stay tuned, and I'm going to show you how to do this using AdGuard Home and Unrate. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to use AdGuard Home and Unrate to reduce the ads on your network. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithrunnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned on this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Here's what we're going to be covering in this video, and that's how to use AdGuard Home and Unrate to reduce the ads in your network. First, what is AdGuard Home? What are the required items that you're going to need to have? Then we'll talk about installing AdGuard Home. And then lastly, configuring. And there's some very interesting things that you'll want to stay tuned because this is going to give you some nice functionality and not have to use a lot of extra software packages. If you're like me, you probably get more ads on your home network than you thought were available in the free universe. There's ways to handle that. Now, I've been using Pi-hole for several years, but I recently found something a little bit better that I wanted to bring to your attention because you can always do better. And I think that one thing is going to be AdGuard. Now, I'm still going to continue to use Pi-hole. It's going to be a backup system just in case I've got to take AdGuard down that I'm still covered. But this is some very interesting things that I think you want to know about. So let's switch over. And this is going to be the thing to pay attention to. Now, what you're seeing here is AdGuard Home. And they're talking about Windows, Mac, Android, iOS. Well, we're doing it on top of Unraid. So trust me, we're taking it to a whole nother level. If you want to know what's different, this is one of the best charts I've found. And this is off where the AdGuard folks have their stuff up on GitHub. And look at the difference. You can get HTTPS for the admin interface. That's built into AdGuard. It would matter just checking a box and a little bit of extra work. You can do it with Pile a little bit more. Now, if you've seen some of my videos in the past, then you'll notice we've talked about DNS over HTTPS or DOH or do as you've heard me say a few times. Sorry, bad joke. Uh, then there's DNS over TLS or DNS crypt. At this point, I have never found a way to run DNS over HTTPS because you've got to get into a third party app and it doesn't support it. It supports DNS over TLS, which is better than nothing, but you, know, you want better. Cross platform, it's. This is where AdGuard, if you're not going to be running on AdGuard, if you're, this is where AdGuard, if you are not going to be running on Unraid, has some advantages. But again, we're talking about Unraid, so we're, we're going to go past that one. You can run it, like I said, DNS or HTTPS over TLS. I never found a way to do it over HTTPS. So that was something I just had to live with. You've got additional blocking options. Then you've got parental control, which is nice. You can force things on there. Even some, some of your kids think they know how to get around some of this. There's per client device configuration, access settings, and running without roof privileges. So this really is something I think you want to take a look at. What you're going to have to have for required items, two things in our case. Unraid, which you sure to have up and running at this point, and then AdGuard. And we're going to bring up AdGuard as a part of Docker. But trust me, some of the instructions you've seen, things have changed because I installed it straight out of the community plugin and it's up and running and been working fabulously. So we're going to go through an installation. Then I'll flip you over to my production ad guard box. So you can kind of see the reports you can get and the information that I'm already seeing. And I haven't totally migrated my devices over yet, but that's something else that we're going to talk about. Installing ad guard could not be any easier. Now this is, or you can see I'm running off 692 Unraid. First we'll go into settings, then we'll go into Docker because you want to make sure that Docker is enabled. If not, it's not going to work real well for you. So we're going to leave everything at defaults. Now I've already gone through and I've picked several things that I want to have on here. I've just searched for AdGuard and the one I'm going to go with here is AdGuard Home. It's from us, a Watt 2545. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your name. Now I'm going to pin it here just so that in case something happens, it will show up on the pin list. Now your pin list is going to be Unraid server specific. So since I've got two Unraid servers, if I don't pin it on both of them, then it's not there. Minor point, but we'll deal with it. Okay, so we'll click on install for AdGuard Home. I'm going to make this uh, as a custom network type. And reason being this way, I don't have to worry about all the port mappings and stuff within Docker. It just simply makes it easier. Then what we'll go through and do is uh, I've already got an address pulled out of my spreadsheet. And it's got to be in the same subnet as 
or the IP address range of your Unraid server. That's just what it's going to be. Now, some of the other directions you're going to see show that this is, you got to add some other things here. I didn't, and it's worked just fine for me. So we'll click on apply, and it's going to take it just a bit here to get everything downloaded. Now, you will see this is the command that's sent out to Docker to get everything fired up. And several of the volumes that it's got to have to work that some of the directions I saw were manually specified is in here now. And it says command successfully finished. Now, if you want to have a different directory structure, you can do that. You're just going to have to do some customization. I'm just trying to get things up and running right out of the box. So we'll click on done. And then we can go over here to dashboard. And if you wonder why it's not responding, is when you first go up to the web GUI, it may say can't be reached. Well, I'm going to show you what's going on. If we go back here and click on logs, you're going to find out that it's still probably getting set up. So it looks like everything is there. So we might have tried just a little too early. So now what we'll go and do is we'll close this screen out and add guard home, web UI. Okay, for some reason it's putting in a different port but we're network people we can figure that out so we'll go in just tap in 3000 this is where we got to do a little bit of customization but trust me this is going to be easy so we'll click on get started i'm going to leave this at default all interfaces dns server all interfaces because it's you, you if you've got multiple ip addresses bound to something yeah you need to select which one but we gave them this its own dedicated ip address so we're we're good with that and it says needs a static address well yeah we've already done that so we'll click on next and we need to go ahead and give it a username and password for admin purposes you can pick whatever you you want to i'll just add something in here and we can get up and running make sure you write this down because if you don't you may find yourself locked out and you're going to have to reinstall and reconfigure and i don't think any of us wants that so we'll click next close that message from chrome now at this point what it's telling us is in order to get this to work whatever is supplying your dhcp service you're going to have to change the dns server that it's using right now it's probably pointed at the router itself or whatever device is issuing dhcp so we need to put this on here put this address that we use here, which is the 10.0.1.18, and make it so that that's what's going to get handed out. Don't worry about if it doesn't show up on all your workstations right away, because your DHCP lease is going to have to refresh. And your IP addresses typically don't refresh until around the somewhere in the 70% range. I can't remember the exact number. And then it will pick it up. You can always refresh your DHCP assignment, and that will force it out a little quicker. But start out gradually, and then you can move from there. So we'll click on next, and it says we're ready to go. Got to log in. At this point, we're not going to see any traffic, but that's a good thing because we want to kind of go through and see what's going on, and then we'll shift over to my production box because I, I didn't want to get you overloaded right away. The general settings, this is how long, how often it's going to update the block list that it's using, and you've got some other services here that you can use. I don't know that I'll keep log retention for 90 days. Right now I'm going at 7. I may bump that up to 30 on my production box. Statistics retention, I'm probably, I'm going to make those two settings match. Again, I don't know that 90 days is a is a big deal. We'll get there. DNS settings, and this is where we'll shift over to the production box and you will see this. This is where when you're going to do DNS over HTTPS, this is what you're going to have to change. And we'll show you the settings here shortly. You've got to give it some bootstrap DNS servers. And what I did, since I'm using the 1.1.1 service for my DNS over HTTPS. I just pointed out to their servers down here. Again, we'll show you that in, in just a bit. Now, encryption settings, this is not something you're going to get into right away. Just be aware of it, but be very careful when you do it, because especially when you if you engage the HTTPS interface, that may cause a little bit of problem for you. Now, the filters, this is where we can go. We've got the different block lists, and there's a host of block lists. I mean, there's block lists that have block lists, I think. So this is what it comes with by default. That's what's enabled to add more. You just click on add block list, choose from the list. And like I said, you've got quite a bit to, to go through here. I've turned up quite a few of them, especially ones that are on a security basis, because I want to avoid having problems if I can at all costs. But again, we'll go over that here in just a little bit. And even though the list will update on a 24 hour interval, unless you change that, it's not a bad idea if you're in here doing some of the work, just to go ahead and force an update.
just in case they've had more than one update in the course of a day and that way you're covered. So there's all sorts of things you can do here, DNS rewrites, there's any number of things you can do that's very, very versatile. The setup guide you've already kind of been through at this point. Now what we're going to do is we'll go over to my production action add guard box. Don't care about grouping things together and we'll get logged in. It keeps loving to tell me that I've got to change passwords. This is what it's going to look like once you've got things up and running. This is going to show you really what can be done. Now we'll get into some of the under the hood stuff to show you how I've done the configuration and I've already got the notes down in the description so that you can follow through what I've done just to make it easy. To get started, we'll click on settings and we'll go into general settings. So you can see I've set this update at 12 hours. Now you can update it even at the one hour intervals that if you're really concerned, then yes, do the one hour. But uh, 12 hours or 24 hours, depending on how much you've got going on on your home network should be more than sufficient. I certainly wouldn't go out for three days. I wanna know when something somebody's knocking at the door and be able to block it. I haven't got into some of these other services yet. Like I said, I'm just still kind of kicking the tires and doing a comparison right now the logs I'm gonna keep it for 30 days because we really don't need to change a whole lot now if you if you've got say like 90 days worth of logs and you cut it down to 30 you're gonna lose information it's gonna truncate it so forewarned and statistics retention yeah I'm gonna go seven days I mean 30 days just so we've got something to work with DNS settings this is the entry that you want to have in there this is what's going to get you to doing DNS over HTTPS that's just the start of it. and they give you some other settings down here to show you what to do now here's what i went and did for the bootstrap servers and you've got to have a bootstrap server in order to find that that's what I'm doing, and I'm just going to get rid of the rest of this because I don't really need it at this point. Well, you always want to, anytime you make changes, you want to make sure you're okay. So click on test up streams. And then once that looks like it's okay, then click apply. And that way you've got that saved. This is getting into a little more advanced setup. Again, this has got room to grow with you. I'm leaving this at defaults for the time being. Then you see about the DNS cache, you can restrict who can request from it. So there's really a lot of very nice flexibility. The encryption settings we've already gone over. This is something I'm leaving alone for right now because you, if you turn on everything once you have problems, then you have to go figure out where the problem is. So start simple. You can, like I said, it's got room to, to grow with on you. Under dashboard, if we go here to blocked by filters or you can go up here, either way, there's not a wrong way to do this. So if we go blocked by filters, and you can see the filters that I'm already using and I've turned up quite a bit because the whole thing that I want to keep from happening is getting somebody trying to get into the network or if I've done something stupid and gone to a site that was infected that I didn't get a warning about this way we've got it set so I've turned up a lot of these you can always look at more information on these we'll say choose from list you can go here to the little eye with a circle around it and that's going to let you see what's actually in the list at that point or you can click on the home button and that's going to take you to the website for the guy who's actually or the group whatever the case may be that is coming up with that so you can get some more information i've not turned up all the security ones but i'm also not getting into some of the regionals and then there's another one called bar block and if you happen to know a custom one as long as they produce it in the format that this understands then you should be good to go now you see where we've got updated and i've already been in here this morning and it did an update, but I'm gonna say, let's check for another update. And if it updates any, then it will tell you, and it says one list updated. It just doesn't tell you which one, but you know what? I'm fine with that. I'm not a total control freak. Now with the query log, you can see what's going on. You can see what was blocked and why. So this is something that has got a lot of room to grow with you. In terms of a migration strategy, the an easy way to do it now you can statically assign this and that's a good reminder anything that you have statically assigned an ip address you need to manually move over to your adguard home server it's not going to just pick it up natively now anything that you're getting by dhcp you go out and change it in dhcp earlier like i said and then you over time as the dhcp reservations or assignment renew, then it should automatically pick up that change or you can force a, a renewal of the DHCP lease on an individual device. Your call, there's no one right or wrong way to do it. So you can see there's there's quite a bit to, to go with here and so far, I have been very pleased with it. I've had it running as my production box for, for several days now. And I've and it will tell you the hits. And the, these are the ones that I'm happy. So far, these have not gotten tripped. But I've blocked about 20%. And that was about in the range a little bit higher than what I was seeing 
with Pi-hole. Again, I'm running both of these, so there is not a right or wrong way. You can always run Pi-hole as a secondary system, so if some reason your AdGuard box is, you got it down for maintenance, hey, that's great. You can also run a second AdGuard instance if you want to, ideally on a separate unraid box so that you have that in case your main unraid box is down you still got adguard up and running by another one something to note if you do that i had this happen on a couple of my streaming media receiver apps some of them don't like the switch i had one service that oh it complained about network problems and everything else until i went in and changed the dhcp server settings for dns and then it was happy the other apps didn't have a problem. So that's a troubleshooting step to remember that if you are taking the IP address down that you're using for AdGuard and you've got a second system there, you may want to go change the order of the DNS servers listed in DHCP that it's giving out because that you may give you a little bit of heartburn. But this is something really that is very, uh, it was very easy to set up. You saw what I went through and very straightforward. AdGuard's got a little bit of a quirk. It's not handing out the right port number, but I can deal with that. And that was just, you get in, you're up and running and that's it. So you really can't make things much easier than that. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.